Hi, Trevor here, reflecting on Live 3 Music. Welcome and thank you for stopping by. It's fantastic you are here. Well, I do trust you enjoyed my last video on American singer-songwriter Crowder and through his song Prove It, we just explored a little bit what we think freedom might be. Freedom's just one of these things that we all kind of want, so it's good to look at that one through the eyes of that song. Well, we go from there to a bunch of guys that were formed in Sydney in 1983. You very much put these guys in the indie rock pop category. In fact, they've been actually defined as a refined atmospheric brand of psychedelia. <laughs> almost whimsical rock here. And the guys we're talking about are The Crystal Set. Now, The Crystal Set was formed by Philip Mayer, Davey Moore, Charles Ratcliffe, although he uh, left the band after a short time and Tim Seacold took over, and Russell Kilby. Now, the Kilby name is very famous in Australian music because Russell's older brother is Steve Kilby, and Steve, of course, is the mainstay in the band The Church as the predominant songwriter. In fact, Steve very much takes up some production duties um, to help his younger brother out with, with some of their songs. And so you will note, uh, particularly in the song I'm going to get on to in a minute, that there is a bit of a church feel, but, but also very much a crystal set feel to that song. So yeah, refined at atmospheric brand of psychedelia, whimsical rock is where we're going today. Now you know what it's like when you when you hear a song. We're talking about a song from the nineteen eighties here, and then it comes just slips back into your mind some forty years later. Oh yeah, there was that song. I loved that song when it came out. It was so cool, just the drive with the guitars and everything like that. And so, yes, this this song came back into my mind a little while ago. I thought, oh, man, I'll just have to get this one for my collection. And when we talk about the crystal set, you've got to talk about the song Benefit of the Doubt. And when you, and um, how often do we hear that, uh, that, that, those kind of words? Oh, let's just give them the benefit of the doubt. They'll be okay. I'm sure things are okay. Let's just give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm just wondering how often we actually do give people benefit of the doubt these days. I'm thinking we become a little bit more <coughs> impatient than we used to be. And we're not being as gracious with people, letting people be human beings and all the rest of it. There's almost now a bit of a level of perfection that we need to be to fit in. Now we've all got this kind of look about us now. Our appearance, our outward appearance has got to be perfect. We've got our earbuds in our ears and we're looking at our phones. We've just got that kind of perfect look about us. I must admit, when I get on the tram, sometimes I sometimes think we're all starting to look a bit the same. We're losing our uniqueness and our originality a little bit because we need to fit in with society. Of course, there's a big movement that says, hey, let's be ourselves and let's let's really explore that and all the rest of it. But the other side is saying, well, hang on a bit. No, no, no. We've also got to be perfect. <laughs> but that's the only way we're going to fit in. I wonder about the Im impacts of reality television in this world these days. I'm thinking that even though reality television is, is good in some ways, about it's about getting into what makes human beings tick. This whole concept of having been perfect to stay in the game, that if you're not perfect, you get voted out, is, is not being very helpful, I'm not thinking. Just think about the shows like The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, for instance, where they do the Meet the Parents episode, you know, the one where the, the guy or the girl are meeting the parents and know every single word, look, um, why they sit, why they breathe even, Everything is analysed to the nth degree. And of course, as a viewing audience, we're just hanging out to see what poor, what what, what, um, what gems or what things are going to be pulled out about the guy's performance or the girl's performance. There's just too much pressure there. There really, really is. 
there's no way in the world that everybody is going to have it that together that we're going to be perfectly sailed through stuff like that. That sort of scenario is actually taking the humanness out of, of the world a little bit. It's almost like it'd be better if we put some good looking robot there and that would actually do all the right stuff and then it would be easy to analyse that. But we're not robots. We're human beings. And if we're not putting our originality and our uniqueness into the world, the world's missing out because the world needs characters. It really, really does. Or what it's like, you know, you might, you might, someone might have um, done something, didn't come up to expectation with some work that you had that you, you had them do. They might have made some little mistake, but they might, you might know just a little blemish somewhere, and you ring them up and say, "Hey, you stuffed up my job." You know, it's it's just a ruined. And the guy comes out, and it's just a little thing, and it's fixed within five minutes, and you go benefit of the doubt i'm sure the guy if he was doing his work properly tried really really hard to do the best by you and to do the right thing because he wants to give you good service and there's just a little slip up from time to time well you don't blast them you say i oh, just wondering about this bit i remember we had we had a bit of a, a patch in a wall done here and, and when i was looking at it i was thinking oh it's, it's not the best job this one so I gave the ring, guy a ring back and said, oh, look, totally, it's probably need to come back. If that's okay, it's not the best job, this one. And he did come back and he fixed it up and there we go. I think people generally try to do the right thing. We need to give people the benefit of the doubt sometimes. We may need them to come back and do something, but we do it in a way that's kind and gracious because just imagine you were the one that had made the blemish and how you'd want to be spoken to, you'd want to be have a bit of understanding in there, I'm thinking. So we need to do that with other people. Or if we're on the road and someone cuts us off, you know, they might have you know, pulled into our lane a bit too quick and we think, oh, well, I've had to slam the brakes on there. You know, we don't actually know what the person's going through at that time, whether they're thinking about and all the rest of it. I know for me, I can get a little bit impatient on the road at times. I think, oh, well, that's a bit close or, or whatever and I'm probably talking to myself here today and saying I need to give people the benefit of the doubt a little bit more let's be gracious a little bit more because we would want people to be gracious with us and, and it also goes with partners too you know if in this world of perfection we need our partners to be perfect we put we put all these hoops that they've got to jump through before will really get into them. Let's take those hoops away, guys. If you are in a relationship that's kind of a good one, let's take the pressure off the other person to have to perform to some kind of expectation. Let them be themselves. And actually, you'll find that that relationship will be probably better because you've let them be themselves as opposed to getting them to conform to some kind of expectation that you might have. Let's take expectations out of the world a little bit and let's just get let people be people. I think we need to so our society needs to give us permission almost to start being people again. We're starting to become a bit robotic and a bit perfect. I want to be in a world full of quirky characters and in a world full of, you know, the errors that we go through and the things that we learn as opposed to being robots and just conforming it makes me sad when i see this around me and we think well everyone's just so perfect now where's the humanity gone well i know that you have humanity and i suppose the encouragement for day today is to let that shine and to give people yourselves the benefit of the doubt of course, there are some moments which are benefit of the doubt moments. We're talking about betrayal or abuse. Those things aren't benefit of the doubt moments. They are things that just shouldn't happen. And so if you are thinking, oh man, I'm perhaps, you know, this is a bit, this is a bit different to that. You know, go and have a chat to someone about it. I'm thinking it could be that's an abusive relationship there. And last one we want to be in. 
is an abusive relationship. Not just physical, by, by the way, also emotional. Like people just always saying no, or people who are just telling you you can't do anything. That's emotional abuse. And so, you know, it's not just the physical stuff, it's emotional as well. Relationships need to be life-giving, not life-zapping. That is for sure. So, let's be gracious in our dealings with each other, guys. Let's give people the benefit of the doubt because in most cases, people are trying to do the right thing. So trust that will be an encouragement to you today. Well, on to the clips, and we've got a couple of clips from the Crystal set today, and these are, are, are both official clips. I couldn't really find any live stuff on, 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 the, on the web about crystal sep so there are there's some couple of official clips we've got we have got benefit of the doubt and you'll see what i mean particularly with the way the guitar here is you're thinking oh when i think of this song i'll think of the song almost with you by the church very much has that beautiful um uh picking guitar stuff going through it but there's also this added atmospheric layer to their songs and it's really quite beautiful and whimsical and you kind of go into a different place um with it a bit <laughs> so it's a place where you can leave the world for a while and you know come back when you're ready so there's that one that came from the from now on album we then also got an, uh, a song a furious mess this came off the 1989 album umbrella and this is really well while i can picture i think this is a song just about heartbreak and a broken heart and using the words of furious mess to actually define that a little bit so that one's there for you as well now uh, the links to both those songs are in the description below that's where you'll always find my links i never put them within my videos and i've also included by the way my last video from crowder so if you want to recap on that one feel free well that's it for today next time we're going to go on to a rock and roll, roll hall of fame inductee band and that is the cure so until then i'll catch you around